All right, so we have a couple of challenges when we're thinking about security in the database system. The biggest challenge being that the word security is very generic. It's not very well defined. So if I'm even trying to sit back and say, what do I talk about when I have a security, uh, or a security lecture in the intro to databases class, it's hard to really narrow that down below you know, 20 or 30 different topics, which I obviously can't cover in an hour, hour and a half of lecture time. Uh, so I'm going to give you a little bit of an end-to-end -end view of what I think about when it comes to security and a database system. All right? I'm not going to start from the points that might be the most kind of predictable ones or the ones that you might see in other places, which would be thinking about the network or thinking about encryption. I'm going to weave those in along the way, but I'm going to be starting from the data model and from the premise that the data model and the kind of the conceptual vision of the system is really kind of ground zero for security and the database system. And to make it a little bit easier and more familiar, I'm going to start with the car to go model, the kind of car sharing thing that appeared on the midterm and that hopefully some of you are working on extra credit with. And we're going to talk a little bit about what appears in that and how that impacts the conversation of security. Cool? Yeah, we're, we're trying to get in and we're trying to say that the right people, the right people um, are accessing the information they should be within our system. In a database system, you know, I, I had you explain it because I think it's one of those concepts that in some ways it's so, it seems so obvious we take it for granted. So we don't necessarily think about it more deeply and how it impacts our system. So in a database system, you know, we have users that are accessing our app and they're accessing the database management system. Are those the users that we're talking about when we're talking about access control within the database? Any thoughts? Who, who's the user in this picture? So yeah, in this, in this picture, most likely, this isn't the only way to do it, but this is the way it's probably going to be most commonly done for like a web app that you're going to see. The application is the user that we're talking about. Are there other users that I haven't pictured that are going to be connecting directly to the database that are going to be part of what we're you know, concerned about? Who else might be getting into that database? So we've got like, these are customers, let's say. Car to go customers. What about the business itself? Yeah. Maybe if you're doing online analytical processing, you have a separate connection which is analyzing data both writing it. Yep. So let's say analysis. So I'm I'm this isn't a you know, uber technical diagram. I'm just kind of showing you what pieces belong and what's created here. Uh, this side, kind of towards the left, are less trusted users. Towards the right, I'm tending to draw kind of more internal trusted types of entities that are connecting. So these might be, let's say, business analysis users. Uh, I'm, I'm also simplifying the database a little bit because like right here we're thinking about an online transactional processing database. Right here we're talking about analytical use of the database. We might actually pull data out and handle that somewhere else, but for right now let's just think of it all as one big database. So we've got business analysis users. Anybody else needed to make the system tick? What's that? The cars themselves? So yeah, the cars themselves, there's going to be some, some sort of connection. It could th be through another API or an application or something like that. We don't really know. I'm going to see if I can draw a better car than I did in the last one. Um, it's not much better, but it's, it's there. So we've got the cars themselves, and they have some sort of connection to the database because they're, they're posting information about GPS. Uh, location, where they were, where they are at a given point in time. They're connected in to make sure that the member who is using them is authorized to use them. I didn't give you this information, but some of you asked questions about it on the exam or kind of made assumptions about it, but car to go cars, like the key is in the car. You don't actually go pick it up from some fixed location. The key to get into the car is this, or is my iPhone app, or my Android app, or whatnot. So this is a smart card. I can walk up to any car on the street and I can hit it 
on the reader and it'll process and it'll say, hey, this car's available and you're allowed to rent it, Start starting rental. I go in, I enter a little pin code and then I can drive off and head to my next place and I pay for that amount of time. So yeah, the cars, the cars themselves are also users in this system. Um, what else? Yeah. Yeah, so the bank's, the bank's also a user in the system. I'm going to say more than likely, it, it kind of depends. They're going to be a user of one of the application points. Um, and so I'll say payment processor here. We'll talk a little bit more about that. They could be a user of the database, but they don't necessarily need direct access to the database. Who are other users? Employees, yeah, so we have like business analysis, maybe those are some types of employees, but we've got other broad types of employees of the database. You know, with each of these, something that comes up is, is the question of how are they accessing the system? Are they accessing it through another application or API going out to just a broad employee connection, or are they accessing it directly? So a business analyst might be accessing it directly. They might be running their own queries and doing you know, checks on that. And if that's the case, then we need to think about access control for business analysts. An application is accessing the database directly. It's a non-human user that's getting into the database. We probably have, you know, if we're thinking about this system, a number of different apps out there that are you know, giving us access. So let's say you know, this one is the web app. This one is an API for mobile. This one's an API for cars. Um, this is a API for general business use or a web app for general business use. And all of these applications, like at this point, you know, what I'm doing is I'm kind of reducing like who are the direct users of the, of the database system itself. I'm kind of creating a network of who can access, what can access, and who has direct privileges on the system. Does that make sense so far, kind of what I'm doing with this? It might not be 100% clear what the security implications are of that yet, but I think that, that should become more clear. Another one that you know, I think a lot of people don't think about if they haven't done this a lot is admins. And this is a critical point when we're talking about access control. So you know, we're thinking about these different things, and the whole point of this exercise is I'm getting you to think about a little bit about access control. When I draw and identify a user on here, like this application as a user, what you should be thinking about, or what should start coming to mind uh, with a little bit of practice is, what do they need access to within the application, within the system? Why do they need access? What do they need access to? You know, how broadly do I need to give them access? So if I've got like my business analyst, do my business analysts need access to a payment card table? Do you think? Okay. No. Do my business card or business analysts need access to a login table? So the, yeah, that would be a good question. Do they need access to a login table? It depends. I mean, this could be customer login, and then we would say no. They don't need access to the customer's logins, but they might have their own portal where they're accessing things, in which case they need login information. So yeah, it depends quite a bit on it. Um, so. You know, thinking about the different user groups here, uh, we have to ask quite a few questions. Now, a little bit trickier is what does the application need? Our main kind of web app or our main mobile app, what does it need access to, at least in the view I've shown you here? Everything. Everything. Yeah. So if we're taking kind of a table-oriented view of the database, the application has to get access to everything. So OK, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to link it back a little bit. I'll, we were talking about, when I started off on this kind of track, we were talking about you know, the specific information about the card number that we're storing. So if I'm thinking about access control as a mechanism to control, you know, to protect the data, to limit who can get access to it, Ideally, what I'm going for is a concept called least privilege. I want the users that are getting access to it to have the absolute minimum amount of privileges within the database environment. 
So my business analysts, maybe they need information about logins, maybe not, but they probably want some general information about members, locations, cars, trips themselves. Maybe we don't even give them the info about specific members. We just, they can kind of link them through foreign keys. And they can do broad an analysis of the cost of operating the system, potential efficiencies that could be introduced, and they can provide some business value through that. If we give everybody who has access to the system access to everything, we create some trouble, okay? Um, you know, another type of employee